everybody, welcome to another exciting week in Through the Roof. Um, I just wanted to pop in and say hello before Miss Amy teaches our lesson today. Um, if you remember, she taught us on Easter, and I thought it would be fun if we could see her again um, as she teaches our lesson about Paul and Barnabas today and their special message about Jesus. Um, but before we do that, I want to tell you real quick about something um, I got to do um, this week involving a special message. I got to go outside and I had a little picnic with my family um, and we got to see some airplanes called the Blue Angels um, sharing a special message to thank our frontline workers, nurses, doctors, um, and all those people that work with them. There's a really long list um, that goes beyond nurses and doctors, I know, but it um, there are a lot of people working really hard in this difficult time. Um, so the, these blue angels flew all around Texas thanking, uh, sending a special message of thanks for these people that are working so hard um, during this time to keep you and me safe and healthy um, and helping um, heal people. So here's a short video of what I got to see this week and then we'll jump right into the lesson. I miss you guys and I'm praying for you and I love you a lot. I'll see you later. Bye. Good morning, Through the Roof friends. This is Miss Amy coming to you again to teach you a lesson this morning. I was with you at Easter on Easter Sunday, and now I get to be with you on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful moms out there from Through the Roof. And we're going to do our lesson on Acts 13 from your Bible. And the whole chapter of 13 is what this is based on. And we're learning today about missionaries. This word here, missionaries. Can you say missionaries with me? That's kind of hard. That's a big, long word. So maybe we'll clap it out. Can you say missionaries? One more time. Missionaries. All right. In Acts 13, there are two main characters. The first one is Paul. Paul's a person that's mentioned quite a lot in the Bible. So you might already know Paul and Paul has an easy name. So you can probably repeat that with me. Can you say Paul? All right. Very good. That's our first character. And then we have his friend Barnabas. That's a little bit harder to say. You might have to clap that one out. Can you say with me? Barnabas. Barnabas. So God sent Paul and Barnabas as missionaries. And really, they were the very first missionaries to make a really long journey like they did. Uh, no one had really gone to spread the news about Jesus on such a long trip as they went on. <clears throat> so we have a map here that shows their trip. <clears throat> and they started at this place called Antioch. And while they were in Antioch, there are a lot of people there that were followers of Jesus that were praying about what Jesus wanted them to do. And they heard Jesus say that they should send Paul and Barnabas to Cyprus and on, on this journey to preach the word of God to all these people on this path. You see the path? The arrows show their path. And this is where they had to take the boat because Cyprus is an island. Cyprus is a little piece of land surrounded all by water. So they had to take the boat to get here. Then they walked across the island to this town. And then they took the boat again. And then all of this trip on the land was done on foot to all these different places. And then they actually came back to going back to many of the places that they had already been. They don't go 
quite through the exact same route, but they visit a lot of the places that they've been twice. There are some things that we can do today that back when Paul and Barnabas were alive, back in the times of the Bible, they weren't able to do. So let's see, I have been, I've got, I've gone and collected all sorts of different ways that we travel. And I thought it might be fun for you. You might want to go around your house. You could pause right now and you could go find all the different kinds of transportation you might have in your house. Little toys that are ways that we get from one place to another place. If you want to do that, you can participate with me or you can watch what I'm going to do. And then you can go back and do it yourself if you like. <clears throat> All right. Let's look at some of these things. What I said is if I like to travel, I travel on an airplane to go somewhere really far away. <clears throat> so this is my airplane here. Now, do you think Paul and Barnabas could travel by airplane? They had to cross the ocean on this trip that they went on. Do you think they could travel by airplane? Yes. Or no guess what guys y'all probably know this but there were no airplanes back in the time of Paul and Barnabas so I'm gonna put that on no they could not travel by airplane back then okay now if I couldn't travel by airplane I'd probably hop in my car to go travel somewhere so what do you think could Paul and Barnabas hop in their cars and take a car on this trip no, they could not. And I found a lot of fun cars and some trucks. <clears throat> and so, you know, you might have fun looking for those in your house. And then you could say, no, they couldn't travel that way back in biblical times, back in the times of the Bible. All right, let's see. What about this? This is a boat. Do you think Paul and Barnabas could use a boat to travel where they needed to go? The answer is yes. They did use boats. Noah used a big boat like this. The boat that they used was probably smaller. In fact, I have a picture here. You can print out your story. You can look at the picture of Paul and Barnabas. And you can see a picture of what the boat might have looked like that they sailed on when they went on their trip. What about, I put a bus. You know, if you were going on a mission trip with your church, to another um, place, like my son goes to Panama City on this, during the summer with the hub, and they have to travel a long way, and they all get on buses. Do you think Paul and Barnabas could get on buses? No, they did not have buses yet, so that's a good way for us to travel. This is supposed to be a pinata of a donkey. Now, what do you think about that? A donkey. Could Paul and Barnabas have ridden on a donkey back in Bible times? I'm going to give you a minute to think about that. Because you could think, huh, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And Mary rode, into, rode to Bethlehem when she was pregnant on a donkey. So people definitely rode donkeys on their trips. I don't know that Paul and Barnabas did, but they could have ridden a donkey. But I don't, I know that they traveled by boat. And then I also know that they traveled another way a lot. A lot of people back in the time of Bible, of the Bible traveled by this way. I have a picture for it. You know what these are supposed to be? These are supposed to be footprints because they walked. They walked most places. They did a whole lot of walking. The only time they would have taken a boat is when they had to take a boat because they had to travel over water. But they did a ton of walking. Our Bible verse this week is from the book of Mark. And it says, go and tell the good news about Jesus. Mark chapter 16 verses 15 and that's pretty much what missionaries do they go and tell the good news about Jesus they take long trips a lot of times to go to other countries a lot of times to go and tell people about Jesus 
So I was going to suggest that you take your ball and you find a friend or a brother or sister or your mom or your dad and they throw you the ball and they say, go and tell. And you catch the ball and you have to say, go and tell. You have to repeat them. And then you throw it back to them. And then the, I say the good news and I throw you the ball and you have to say the good news and you throw it back. And I say, about Jesus. And then you catch the ball. And you say, about Jesus. You repeat it. And then you throw it back to me. And then you could even say, Mark 16, 15. And then I throw it. You repeat the verse. And you throw the ball back to me. And that's a good way to help you learn your verse. So we had a megaphone that I thought we could make this week <clears throat> and it set so I've got a pattern that you can print out that I've sent to you guys and it looks like this and let me read what it says to you on there it says shout the good news that Jesus loves everyone and that just seems appropriate for this story about missionaries we want to go and tell people about Jesus. So this is a way, even with our situation now, right now you're not allowed, to, even if you wanted to go on a mission trip and travel across the world, you couldn't go right now with the coronavirus. But you could stand across the street and use your megaphone to tell people about Jesus. You could say, I love Jesus, Jesus loves you with your megaphone. It's a way to help you amplify your sound, make your sound large, <coughs> louder. So, we, you can take the sheet and print it out, and then you can cut it out, and you can, I would actually decorate it first, probably, before I cut it out, and I used colored pencils, you can use markers, crayons, whatever you have in your house, and like I said last time <laughs> that I did the lesson and I did the craft, I think an easy way to decorate is with stickers. I always like stickers. A lot of times some stickers can be pulled off by our kiddos without a problem and put on there. Some stickers can be hard sometimes. They might, you might need some help with that. Also, I like to use stamps a lot of times. Stamps are a great way to decorate. So take whatever you have in your house and you can decorate your megaphone, you can cut it out, and then I just, you just take it and put it together like this. You can get help if you need help. You can get help from your mom or your dad or even a brother or sister. You have, a, I know that there are a lot of very helpful brothers and sisters out there. And I taped mine. You could glue it if you want. How, you can put it together however you want. I like using tape. So that's what I did is I taped mine. Um, oops, that's okay. So, there were a couple of other ways that I read <coughs> that you can make a megaphone. You, I think probably the best size paper would be a big, bigger paper. I even saw people suggesting poster board paper. If you wanted to make a megaphone with a poster board, you could. But here again, it would be perfect, but I still think it looks good. Tape it together and decorate it and make a megaphone this way. And then you can go around your house, around your neighborhood, and you can tell people- Jesus loves you. All right, that is our craft for today. Hey friends, Mr. Daniel again. Wasn't that an awesome lesson that Miss Amy just did for us? I loved her story about the missionaries Paul and Barnabas. You may remember that last week I told you Barnabas' name meant encourager. This week I want to remind you that Barnabas was also a helper. He was Paul's assistant and he ran errands for him and he was his traveling companion and he helped carry the bags. This week I encourage you to be a helper too. Help mom, help dad, especially mom on Mother's Day today. Isn't that awesome? So give mom a big hug and a kiss and tell her how much you love and appreciate her and show her that you love her by being a helper this week. Let me close this in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, 
through the roof and our friends, we all come together right now to tell you how much we love you. Thank you for the missionaries that brought the good news of Jesus to us and our families and help us to be missionaries and helpers and tell others about Jesus' love. Amen. All right, until next week, know that I miss you. I love you very much. I'm praying for you, and I cannot wait for us to all be back together again. Until next time, bye-bye.